My name's Liz, I'm the baker that sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So welcome back to one of my Sunday sewing catch-ups. As usual, I've got lots of things that I want to share with you and if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen snippets of what I've been working on this weekend. Um, I have been sewing quite a few things. Next weekend, we've um, got a hospital appointment for Ruby, which is gonna take up most of the day on the Saturday. So I know that I'm not gonna get as much time to sew. So yesterday, I spent the whole day in my loungewear. Didn't go out anywhere, cooked a nice dinner for us all, but in between cooking, um, I just immersed myself in sewing. Got up quite early so that I could really make the most of a whole day of sewing. So I have been able to sew quite a few things mixture of things this week some things that are sensible um some things that are just really fun and i'm really excited about sharing them with you today so before i dive into what i've been getting up to i'll let you know what i'm wearing and i'm wearing one of my favorite sweater dresses it's the nina lee south bank sweater dress um if i don't have any patterns to hand to talk about i will put images in where possible um so i'll put a picture in of what the sweater dress looks like so you can sew the south bank sweater as a cropped jumper a regular jumper or a jumper dress and that's what i'm wearing today a jumper dress this really fun fabric was from hey so sister um i think it was last winter i don't know if they've got any left if they have, I'll link it down below, but it's a really fun fabric. It's a cream fabric and it's got all these apples all over it. I've got the lovely neckband that you get with the South Bank sweater dress. You've got cuffs. Um, it's just quite a relaxed fit sweater dress. And then you've got a hemband on the bottom and I've just got some fur lined tights um, because it's quite cold in London at the moment. So they're gonna keep me nice and warm. I have got some crochet earrings on. I think I've shared those before. Um, I got them from a seller on Etsy, so I'll link them down below if they're still selling those earrings. So that's what I'm wearing. So what have I been busy sewing this week? So you will have seen by the thumbnail on this video a couple of quite fun um, garments that I've been busy sewing. So I've got my list in front of me because I don't want to forget anything that I've been busy sewing this week. Um, last weekend I talked about sewing a couple of Nico dresses. Um, I wanted to sew some loungewear for Ruby. I wanted to make a start on the pogo nip sweater. I haven't done that because something else... I got distracted basically by um, some fabric that had arrived and plans for that fabric and that jumped straight to the top of the list. So I'll talk about that in a second. Um, I was going to possibly make a start on Lola's blazer. I haven't done that, but the fun jackets that I have been sewing will explain why I haven't gotten onto that blazer. So those plans are going to get pushed to next weekend, if not the weekend after. Um, before I share what I've been sewing, actually, I want to say a massive thank you for the suggestions on what to use this checked fabric for. Lots of brilliant suggestions. A couple of people suggested sewing some pyjama bottoms um, for James, my husband, because I keep talking about sewing things for myself, Ruby and Lola, but not so much for him. Um, I've shown him the fabric and actually he really loves the idea. So I'm going to use the Tilly and the Buttons Joe pyjama bottoms and I'm going to use this fabric to sew up some pyjama bottoms for him. There's two and a half meters, so that should be enough to sew up some pajama bottoms for him. And then somebody suggested, I'm really sorry I didn't write down who it was, um, the quilted jersey grey fabric that I shared in one of my fabric hauls, and I think I talked about it last weekend. Somebody suggested using that for a top, and I have got enough of that left, so I'm going to use it for a top um, to go with this. So he's thrilled that he's going to get some new pajamas. So I just wanted to say thank you so much for all the brilliant suggestions with that fabric. I have got this month's Sew Hilly Jane fabric to share with you once I've shared what I've been sewing and I would really love your suggestions for that too. Um, so thanks for all your help with um, suggestions of patterns and things with fabrics that I've shared. I really appreciate it. So I have sewn two Nico dresses and I have also sewn a Nico top because I had a little bit of the lilac brushed rib knit fabric left. I couldn't squeeze the top out of the khaki coloured fabric. I don't know why, because I've got exactly the same amount of both fabrics. So maybe the khaki one was slightly narrower. Um, I'll put pictures in of all of these. Um, you can just see the sequins. The sun has just started to shine. You can see them reflected on the wall behind me. I will be sharing that skirt in a minute. Um, but yeah, I've sewn up two Nico dresses. Absolutely love that pattern. I find it really comfortable to wear. I feel like um, it is quite a stylish dress to wear as well. Um, keeps me nice and warm when it's quite chilly and it goes really well with lots of like cardigans and jackets that I've got. 
So I had this gorgeous lilac brushed ribbon knit fabric from Simi Sunshine and they did still have some of this left last time I checked. Um, I linked it last weekend for you as well. Um, so I've just turned it into the Nico dress. You've got that um, turtleneck kind of neck band, um, long slim fitting sleeves, and then you've got the side slit um, and I've got the side slit for both of the dresses. Quite tricky to hold up and show you, but basically that's the first one. This is the second one and I'll put pictures in of me wearing both of them so you can see what it looks like on. Um, but that's what the second one looks like, just in the khaki colourway of the same brushed rib knit fabric that I got from Somi Sunshine. So you've got the turtleneck um, neckband, slim fitting long sleeves, it's a long dress and you've got the side split as well. Um, and I've been really enjoying wearing the plain colours so that I can wear some of my um, jazzy kind of necklaces and also I've been wearing my scarf quite a lot that I crocheted um, and just been keeping that on to stay nice and cosy and warm. So I've found that having the plain Nico dresses, um, they've also gone with my Hevea jackets and there's a couple of Hevea jackets that I've been wearing. The black and white gingham one, which I'll put a picture in. I think I've got photos of that. And then there's a blue one, which has got like geometric shapes all over it. And I've been wearing that one quite a lot this week as well. And I'll put a picture in of that one. So two lovely jersey jumper dresses, which I know I'm going to get lots and lots of wear out of. And then, like I said, I had some of the lilac um, brushed rib knit fabric left. So I've just sewn up a really simple um, top that I can wear under dungarees. Um, I can wear under dungaree dresses, I can pair with some of my trousers and my skirts as well. And that's just going to add another layer of warmth for me. So it's just a really simple, straightforward, slim fitting top with the long sleeves and that neckband as well. So I'm really pleased with that one. I know that I'm going to get lots of wear out of that. And that colourway I know is going to go with a lot of my skirts that I've sewn up. So the um, flat fronted kind of gathered skirts that I've sewn up in some printed fabrics. I know that that Nico top is going to go really well with those skirts as well. Last weekend I talked about the new Craft House everyday dress in the lovely gingham viscose linen fabric and I just needed to hem it and I also needed to finish the neckline. And I think last weekend I talked about extending the bias binding around the neckline um, to create ties on the back. But what I actually found with the fabric was it just frayed far too much. Um, and I just thought that the ties would disintegrate too much over time. So I did end up going with a button on the back and a loop because I knew that I would be able to finish that better. So I still used bias binding for the neckline and the bias binding went in really nicely. And then I have used a button that I got from Buffins Vintage Buttons um, over on Etsy. I've got quite a few of her gorgeous buttons. Um, and this one I just thought went perfectly with that gorgeous fabric. So it's completely finished. I will put pictures in of me wearing this, um, but that's what it looks like. So you've got the two tiers on the dress. Um, it's got really gorgeous puff sleeve finished with that cuff. Um, you finish the neckline with bias binding and I've just used the same fabric to create that bias binding neckline. And then you finish it with a rouleau loop and a button. So you get that keyhole opening on the dress. Um, and then I did have enough of this fabric to put pockets in. So I have got pockets in this dress as well. Um, pockets are pretty essential for me when I'm at work because I'm always being given things by the children. Um, I always need post-it notes and pens. Working in the nursery, I always need tissues. So I do like being able to put pockets in things where possible. I know I'm gonna get loads of wear out of this in the winter, but I know that I'm also gonna get lots of wear out of this in the spring and the summer. Um, and that fabric is just absolutely stunning. I got this fabric from Fabric Godmother and if they've got any left, I will link it down below for you. It's such a beautiful fabric. It's got a really nice amount of drape um, and it feels quite lightweight as well. Um, so yeah, I'm really thrilled that I've managed to get that dress finished because that dress has been cut out for absolutely ages. Um, so yeah, that's going to really add to my wardrobe and I'm going to really enjoy swishing around in that lovely dress with that beautiful fabric. So the next thing that I've been busy sewing, and I talked about this last weekend, was using this really fun sequin fabric to sew up a really simple skirt. And I wanted to line the skirt with this, um, I think it was a poly satin, you can see how creased it is. Um, I need to give it a little iron, but I just wanted to make sure that I had a lining because I thought that the sequin fabric on the other side, although it's smooth and there's no sequins, I did think it would be quite scratchy. And if I wore tight, I knew that that would catch on the tights 
So I have just lined it um, with that fabric. I just created a simple skirt on the inside and then a simple skirt on the outside as well. And then I have just gathered the um, sequin fabric onto a piece of elastic. So it's a really straightforward, I'm just gonna hold it up. It does feel quite heavy actually with the amount of sequin fabric. So it's just on a black elastic waistband and very stretchy. Oh, I can feel it sticking to my tights already. Um, I didn't hem the bottom. I've just kept it um, with the sequins, but I know that that is not going to fray. So I think that will be absolutely fine. I'll stand up so you can see. Um, but I think it's just gonna be a really fun skirt um, that I can wear. I mean, I would wear this to school. I think the children would absolutely love me wearing it. Any kind of parties or any opportunity to wear sequins, I'm gonna dig out this skirt. And actually, I think the Nico top, where is it? That lilac colourway, I think, goes really nicely, actually, with the sequins. So I think that would work really nicely with it as well. Um, so, yeah, I'm really pleased. It's a really, really simple skirt. Um, I just gathered it onto the elastic. And, like I said, it's got that lining um, on the inside just to stop the sequin fabric from sticking to any tights if I wear them with tights. I'll put a picture in of me wearing that skirt so you can see what it looks like. But that fabric is just absolutely gorgeous absolutely love it um, and I think it's a really fun party skirt and also just a, a skirt for wearing any time of the day it doesn't need to be a party so the next thing that I wanted to get sewn up this week was um, some loungewear for Ruby using this velour fabric that I got from Rainbow Fabrics so I talked about using the LB pullover um, by Paper Theory Patterns put an image in now of what it looks like it's got basically oh they're the trousers the pullover has basically got a really wide um, sort of neck, uh, funnel neck detail, dropped shoulders. I did find when I made it for myself that the sleeves could have done with being extended. So I have extended it by, I think I added an extra inch and a half on the end um, and it's absolutely fine. Um, I didn't add any length to the jumper, but next time I sew one up for Ruby, they've requested that I do add a little bit more length to the jumper. Um, but it's a really straightforward pattern to sew up, comes together really quickly um, and a really enjoyable sew. So I've sewn up the jumper, the pullover, which I talked about. And then I also talked about using a pattern from this book, the Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book. Um, and I was going to use the Juno pyjama bottoms for the bottoms for Ruby. And that's exactly what I've done. And um, they're quite a slim fitting pyjama bottom. You've got a cuff on the bottom and then the waistband you attach. So you've, you create a waistband using thin elastic and then you attach it to the top, stitch it in place and then you turn it over. Where does it show? Yeah, turn it over and then you stitch it again. So the elastic is actually hidden. Um, if I show you, the elastic is hidden on the inside of the pyjama bottoms. So you attach the elastic first, then you fold it over and you create that kind of waistband and it encloses. Um, really straightforward pattern. Um, they are quite a slim fitting pyjama bottom and then you've just got that cuff. So there's no waistband piece. You've got the front and back trouser pattern and then you've got that cuff band for the bottom. Um, and together they work really nicely. It's just a really cosy loungewear set. Um, so Ruby is really pleased with the new loungewear set that they've got. Um, I did have a little bit of this fabric left and I cut out a True Bias Nico top because I could manage to get it out of this fabric. The fabric didn't have enough stretch to it to work as a really slim fitting um, top. So I've had to put that in the bin, unfortunately, because it just didn't work. I could just get it over my head, but then it felt really tight and it just didn't work. I didn't end up finishing it in the end. So I've popped it in my um, bag of recycling, unfortunately. So on to, I think the final two things that I've been busy sewing up and I got these sewn up yesterday and I finished them this morning and I'm so pleased with them both. So for Christmas, we got Ruby a rainbow quilted um, like bedspread um, just as an extra layer on their bed um, in this gorgeous rainbow quilted fabric. Well, it's a rainbow quilt, basically, that I got from Dunelm. I'll put a picture in now so you can see what it looks like. And I could not stop thinking about how incredible that fabric would be as a coat. So over Christmas, By Hand London had um, a sale on a couple of their patterns. So they were doing this like five pound pattern. And there was two patterns in the email that they sent out. One of the patterns was the Nerissa coat. It's a quilted coat that you can sew up as a long coat or you can sew it up as a cropped kind of jacket. 
um, and I hadn't really considered buying that pattern but when it was on sale it was only five pounds so over Christmas I did buy the pattern because um, I really liked the look of the longer length quilted coat and the idea behind that pattern is that you use a second hand quilt or a vintage quilt or you quilt your own fabric and then you use that fabric to create the quilted coat. Um, so I went back onto the Dunham well website and actually the rainbow quilt that we got for Ruby was on sale so I thought it was meant to be. So I ended up buying two of them. Um, you do get quite a lot of fabric because it's 150 centimetres by 200 centimetres but I knew that the Narissa coat if I was going to do the longer length would take up a huge amount of fabric. So I ended up buying two of the quilts and it was exactly enough to get two jackets out of it. So I've sewn up the Narissa coat for myself and then I've also sewn up, because Lola was eyeing it up as I was sewing it up, but um, I am gonna keep the Narissa coat for myself. I absolutely love it and I cannot wait to wear it. Um, but I did have enough of the quilt fabric left to sew up a cropped jacket for her. I'll start with the cropped jacket because I used one of my favourite quilted jacket patterns, which is the Hervea jacket. I've sewn quite a few of these now. And I actually sewed up view E, which is the cropped version. I was a bit worried that it might look a bit too cropped on her, but actually it fits her really nicely. So I'll show you her jacket first. And I've got pictures of us both wearing these jackets. We both absolutely love them. Um, so this is her jacket. So I'll put it on so you can see, but this is her jacket. Um, and you can see how fun that fabric is. It's just absolutely incredible. Um, and I've tried really hard to pattern match um, and I managed to pattern match the pockets on both sides. Um, she got this little patch from Liberty over Christmas. It's a little panda and she's requested that I put it on the pocket. Um, I think it looks really cute actually. Um, so yeah, it's got the hem band going down the front you've got the pockets here but you can't really see the pockets I didn't put ties on I haven't added a button or anything like that it's just going to be an open jacket it's got dropped shoulder sleeves on both sides and I've tried to make sure that the sleeves use the same um, fabric so they're identical sleeves and I tried to pattern match on the jacket as well um, and then you've got the back now I had to cut the back pattern piece um, you're supposed to cut it on the fold for the Hervea jacket, but I didn't have enough of this fabric left to cut it on the fold. So actually you can see that there is a seam line down the back, but I did manage to make sure that we were pattern matched down the back. So actually, I mean, you will be able to see the seam because I can't iron that out, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't kind of interrupt the pattern um, on the back of the coat. Um, it's the cropped version, like I said, which is view E, um, and Lola's absolutely thrilled with it. This pattern, I've got the paper pattern, which comes in sizes 0 to 20. I think it is in larger sizes as well. Um, it's a loose fit dropped shoulder jacket, and there's different lengths that you can sew up. Um, and I have sewn up, I think I've sewn up view A and view C. I haven't done the jacket where it's got the bias binding along the front, which is this one. Um, I've only ever sewn up the one that's got the hem band because I really like the look of that. Um, and the pockets are great. Even on the cropped jacket, the pockets are great as well. Um, and I love that you can't really see the pockets. I love that they're sort of camouflaged on the jacket. And I know that Lola's going to get lots and lots of wear out of this jacket. Um, it's really fun. I love how bright and colourful the fabric is as well. Um, and I love that we've got matching jackets. So that one was for Lola. So that's why I didn't get round to sewing up her blazer yet because I sewed up a jacket instead. And we're going to match and I'm very excited about matching. Now on to my coat, which I absolutely love. It's gonna be really difficult to show on camera because it is a really long coat. It stops kind of just above my ankle. So it's exactly like wrapping yourself in a duvet and going out of the house wearing a duvet. Um, I tried really hard with pattern matching, you'll be able to see that, but basically it's got this gorgeous collar and then the buttons I've gone for are these beautiful, um, I think they're a collaboration between Cut One Pair and Pigeon Wishes, beautiful lilac heart buttons. I've pattern matched the pockets which you can see just about make out here and then I had a cute little I had a cute little patch here that says cute, um, that reflects lots of the colours that are on the coat. It's got a slightly curved bit on the coat here. And then I did use the same fabric to finish the edges of the coat. 
Um, so I almost made like a mini facing to act like bias binding. So that's all the way around the inside of the coat. Um, really took my time with that. I had to press it really carefully and put lots and lots of pins and clips in it to keep it in place. Um, so yeah, I've pattern matched the front. And then I'm really pleased because I pattern matched the sides of the coat as well. So basically the pattern is matched all the way around the coat. And then my favourite part of the coat on the back, I had a um, embroidered um, kind of, it's not really a patch. Lola had a jumper when she was about five years old that had this amazing embroidered tiger on the front of it. Um, and over time it just got worn and worn and worn. And I absolutely loved the tiger and I didn't want to get rid of it. So instead, I cut around the tiger in the hope that eventually one day I would find the perfect project to applique the tiger onto the front or the back or whatever. Um, and over Christmas, I had a tidy up. I'd completely forgotten about this embroidered tiger kind of, it's not really a patch, but this embroidered tiger basically that I wanted to put onto something rediscovered it over Christmas and I could not stop thinking about where I should put this tiger because it had been sat in my box for years. Um, it had been sat in my box for probably about six or seven years um, and I um, pinned it onto the back of this coat just to see if I thought it would work or not. Left it overnight um, and shared an image of it on Instagram to say that I, on my Instagram stories to say that I was thinking about whether this tiger patch would work or not. Um, hung it where I could see it for me to wake up this morning and I knew that once I woke up this morning I would either think yes it works or no it looks ridiculous and I have gone with the yes it works I absolutely love it I've asked my husband and my children and they think it looks great um, you may think differently but I absolutely love it and I'm really pleased I think it works so brilliantly on the back of this coat because this coat is quite a long coat and because of all the different colours in the fabric I think it works really well with the tiger patch so I'll stop wittering on and I will show you what it looks like. But basically, that is the tiger patch on the back of the coat. How incredible is that? I just think it's absolutely beautiful. So I've got a real lovely kind of feature on the back of my coat as well. And then with my sleeves, I was really careful when I was cutting out the sleeve patterns. And this quilt was already finished with yellow bias binding. So I've managed to cut the sleeves for my jacket and also the sleeves for Lola's jacket, keeping the original yellow bias binding so I didn't have to hem the sleeves. And that means that I've got a really lovely finish on the sleeves. And then because I use the same fabric to act as a bias binding on the coat, it means that I've got a really lovely finish on the inside of the coat as well. I know that I'm gonna absolutely love wearing this jacket, uh, well, coat. Um, I think it's such a fun coat. I've really, really enjoyed kind of immersing myself in making it. And as soon as this duvet arrived, um, I was just so motivated to get it sewn up. And I've just really, really loved every second of making this one and also making the same one for Lola. Um, and it just makes me smile every time I look at it. I just keep putting it on and walking around my house just wearing it. Um, everybody's had a go at trying on my coat and everyone's had a go at trying on Lola's jacket too and I'm going to really enjoy matching, um, wearing matching coats when we leave the house as well. So an unexpected make but a make that I have absolutely loved and I cannot wait to wear it. Um, I just love absolutely everything about it. Really thought carefully about pattern matching, really thought carefully about the buttons, thought really carefully about the finish of the coat and this is my favourite part of it, I think, that tiger that's on the back of it as well. So really, really pleased with everything that I've got sewn up this week. So I have been super busy getting lots of things sewn up this week, but like I said, I know that next weekend I'm not going to be able to get a huge amount of sewing time. So I've just really immersed myself in lots and lots of sewing this week. A couple of straightforward things, but a couple of things that have taken a little bit longer um, and have been a little bit more challenging, but really, really fun to work on. I just wanted to say a massive thank you to In Agata's Cottage over on YouTube, who did a lovely shout out on her channel um, about me and my YouTube channel. I've had a few new followers. Um, I've had a few new subscribers on my channel. So I just want to say a massive thank you for the really lovely shout out that you did was really really kind of you and if you don't follow her on her channel I'll link it down below so you can go and give her a little follow her videos are great quite often she shares her pets as well and I just love seeing cats 
so go and give her a little follow um, the next thing I wanted to share was some fabric that survived. So I talked about some organza fabric that I'd ordered from Pound Fabrics because I'm going to be sewing up a skirt and putting some um, fabric paint all over it. So it has arrived really straightforward organza fabric. Um, I can see that with it layered and with the paint on, hopefully I won't need to line it. Um, but I'm going to have lots and lots of fun having a go at experimenting with painting that fabric. So I'm just going to try, um, I've got the lace fabric to test it out and twirl it first, but then I'm going to try painting on a little bit of this before I actually start doing the whole project, just to see how long the paint takes to dry, what the fabric feels like when the paint's dried as well, um, and just the techniques of um, applying the paint onto this gorgeous fabric. But that arrived from uh, Pound Fabrics. They have organza in lots of different colourways if you're ever looking for it and it was relatively um, cheap as well. So I link the organza that I bought down below for you if you're interested. And then I have ordered uh, and it's arrived this incredible quilted um, fabric from Fabric Godmother. I've got it in lilac um, and this was in the sale and I am denied about it over Christmas. But you know when there's a fabric that you've seen that you cannot stop thinking about? This was exactly that fabric that I could not stop thinking about. Um, I love how bright and colourful it is. I love how fun it is. Um, I think the colour is absolutely incredible. It's so bright. The inside is just as bright. Um, I don't know what I'm going to turn it into. I've got two metres of it. Um, I know that the right project will come along at the right time. This is a really nice soft... Um, sometimes with quilted fabric it's quite firm, but this feels nice and soft. Um, I did buy some fabric from them that was quilted, that was iridescent, that was pink. And I sewed up the I Am Heather, um, do they call it a vest? Or it's not a jacket, it's a sleeveless, um, almost like gilet type thing. Um, I'll put a picture in now so you can see what that looks like. I don't think I want to use this to sew up that. I think I want to use this to sew up some kind of like um, puffer jacket, but I'm not sure on what pattern I will use yet. Um, but I couldn't resist it and it was in the sales, so I thought it was a bargain. Absolutely gorgeous and super fun. Then I mentioned at the start that the next So Helly Jane box has arrived and that box has influenced me to buy a couple of patterns, which I'm going to talk about in a second. But the fabric arrived and it's this fine needle cord in like a burgundy colourway with these beautiful flowers all over it. It's very vintage feeling. Um, I've got two and a half metres of it. Um, it's quite a narrow fabric. Um, I don't really know what to turn it into, so I would really love your suggestions. Um, because it's a fine needle cord, it is quite a lightweight fabric. Um, so I would love your suggestions on what to turn it into. I was thinking a skirt, but I don't like wearing fitted skirts. Um, I don't feel that I suit that kind of look. Um, and I don't think this would work as a gathered skirt. Um, I was thinking maybe some trousers. So if anyone's got any suggestions on what to turn this into, it's almost like a burgundy brown kind of colourway. And those flowers are just absolutely gorgeous. I'd really love to get this sewn up quite soon, actually, because I feel like it would work for my winter wardrobe and possibly spring wardrobe. So I would really love your suggestions on what to turn that into. Two and a half metres, but it is a really narrow fabric. Um, so please let me know in the comments below what you would turn that gorgeous fabric into. So then I talked about um, the So Helly Jane box inspiring me to buy a couple of patterns. So in the box, we got some fleece fabric. Um, so So Helly Jane used to include fat quarters, but she's now moved away from including fat quarters. And instead, we get a length of another piece of fabric up to a metre. And we got this really fun um, daisy print fleece fabric. Um, and in the magazine, they also talked about a hat pattern and it is the Haslam hat by Thread Theory Patterns. Um, and as soon as I saw that hat, I thought it would be the perfect hat to sew up a hat for myself, my husband, Ruby and Lola. And I wanted to use the daisy print fleece fabric um, to do exactly that. So I've cut it out to sew up a hat using that pattern. So the pattern comes in three different sizes, small, medium and large, and it's based on your head circumference. So for a small, it's a 21 and a half inch head circumference. For a medium, it's 23 inches head circumference. And then for a large, it's 24 and a half inch head circumference. Um, it's a practical hat. There's three different options. So you can sew up like a, almost like a beanie type hat with a band. 
you can sew up one that's got um what do they describe it as um ear flaps so you can do short ear flaps or you can do longer ear flaps i've cut out the longer ear flaps there's an option to add a pom-pom on the top and then there's also an option to have like these bits that hang down and then they've got tassels on and that looks like a really fun option as well in terms of fabric recommendations they recommend medium weight sweater knit fabrics like a sweatshirt fleece french terry or flat. and then they also say that you can do an optional lining fabric you can either cut out the lining in the same fabric that you're using for the outside of the hat or you can use a different fabric to line it and in terms of lining fabrics they recommend a sherpa sweatshirt fleece or flannel fabric so i've already cut it out to have a go at sewing myself one using this fleece daisy print fabric and then once I've sewn that up and worked out the fit and the construction I've got that lovely gummy bear fleece fabric that I bought for Ruby and Lola which I'm going to use to sew them both up a hat and then I've also got some other fleece fabric that I will sew up a hat for my husband as well once I've figured it out so I'm hoping because it, it says that it's quite a quick to sew hat so I'm hoping next weekend I will get a little bit of time, maybe on the Friday evening, to sew up the hat so I can talk about them next weekend. And then the fold line have a section in the magazine as well called the fold line pattern picks. And usually it's matched up to the fabrics that you get in the boxes. And one of the patterns that they've suggested, not for the needle cord, for a different fabric, is a fibre mood pattern, which is called the ruby dress. Um, I couldn't resist this for two reasons. One, it's called ruby. And two, it's quite a relaxed fit jumper dress and I absolutely fell in love with the sleeve detail on this pattern so it, it's this dress pattern here um, it's very similar to the true bias Nico dress um, but the difference is it's got a dropped shoulder sleeve detail and you probably can't tell really there I'll put a better image in but it's gathered into a cuff there and then at the dropped shoulder aspect the sleeve is gathered as well and it creates this really gorgeous sleeve detail I probably could have hacked the Nico dress if I wanted to, but a bit like the fabric that I got from Fabric Godmother, as soon as I saw this pattern in this magazine, I couldn't stop thinking about it. So I've ordered it and I've sent it off to be copy shop printed and I cannot wait to have a go at sewing it up. I'm very excited. I've got a couple of pieces of fabric in my stash and then I've also ordered the most beautiful green ribnet fabric from New Craft House in the most gorgeous green colourway um, and I cannot wait for that to arrive because I'm going to use that to sew up the ruby dress. Um, so it's described as a loose jumper dress with dropped shoulders and gathered sleeves, slight side slits and then um, it's gathered into a cuff on the sleeve as well. It comes in sizes UK 6 to 30 and in terms of fabrics they recommend sweatshirt fabrics like a French terry. It's quite a relaxed fit um, in comparison to the Nico dress and the sleeves are a bit more billowy um, and that's the detail that I just absolutely fell in love with. So I've definitely got firm plans to sew up at least two of those dresses already. Very excited about that. Then I've got a small sewing channel to mention and I'll link them down below and this is a relatively new um, sewing channel. I think they've only been they've only been kind of releasing videos for the last couple of weeks. So it's two friends and they're called Kelly and Dee. They've got a really lovely um, friendship and that really comes across on camera. They've only got a couple of videos on their channel so far. So they've got an introduction vlog, they've got a vlog where they share their sewing spaces, there's a vlog talking about a pattern, the Porsche dress by Sew Over It. And then there's also a video where they do a Sew Heady Jane unboxing. The channel is called Sisters of Stitchcraft. Um, I'll link them down below. Um, it'd be great if you could head over and give them a little follow. And they've only got four videos for you to watch. So there's not too many videos for you to catch up on. They're also on Instagram, so I'll link their Instagram page down below as well. And then the final thing that I'd like to finish with are my sewing plans. So like I said, not a huge amount of time to sew next weekend, but I've got the Thread Theory Haslam hat cut out ready to go that I'd like to get sewn up. I have got the Wilder gown in that red lace fabric. I can't remember if I shared that last weekend. I think I did, but I've got the Wilder gown in this red lace fabric that I would like to start. And then I've also got Lola's Heather blazer that I would love to have a go at starting to sew up because I think she's going to enjoy wearing that in the winter whilst it's a little bit chilly. Um, I also decided on the waistcoat pattern that I'm sewing up at the moment that I want to cover in pom-poms. 
and I have gone with that grey quilted fabric and I'm just going to um, put a layer of wadding in between and then I'm going to pop all the pom-poms on. So I've got that cut out, I just need a little bit of time to start putting that together and I'm continuing with creating my pom-poms too. Um, so lots of plans as usual, not sure how much I will actually get round to sewing next weekend um, but hopefully I'll have a few things to share with you um, in my Sunday sewing catch up next weekend. I'll definitely have some um, fabric to talk to you about next weekend. Thank you as always for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd really love it if you could hit that subscribe button because you get notified of when I bring out my next video. Thank you as always for watching. I also wanted to say thank you to everybody that's messaged me saying that you wave back when I wave at the start of my video and at the end of my video. Um, it's just a natural thing that I do in my videos, makes me smile and I, in my head I've got an image of you all waving back so that's why I do it and when I say hello in real life I wave as well. So thank you as always for watching, take care and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye!